James Kaufman will news report today. Today is September 29th, 2022, 1 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager at 195 angstroms. Please note the coronal hole that's Earth facing and all of the sunspots covering our sun. Now, we have some problems that we need to discuss or try to figure out here. NOAA has actually put out a new KP index breakdown from September 29th today through October 1st. And ladies and gentlemen, starting at 3 p.m. Central Time tomorrow on September 30th, NOAA says that we're going to enter a geomagnetic storm. That's going to be ongoing for 27 hours plus. I say plus because we don't have any more information after the G2 KP6 that actually happens from 3 to 6 on October 1st here Central Time. I'm assuming that that doesn't mean that this storm will end at that time. That's just all the information we have currently. Now, did that coral hole expel enough solar wind to create 27 hours of geomagnetic storms, including mild and moderate storms? I don't think so. The WSA Inland Prediction Center is usually wrong. We all know that. I want you all to please take a look first at the plasma. This would be the plasma here. On the first... They actually have plasma hitting later in the day, and it looks like it goes up to right under 20 centimeters cubed. Now, when we jump over and look at solar winds for the first, they're down here below 400, close to 300 kilometers per second, and really never reach 400 kilometers per second. I would like to also note that this has not been updated today. You usually see it updated. It would start at the 28th if it had been updated today, which it has not been. We'll see if a future update explains more of what's going on on the 30th, tomorrow afternoon, and through the 1st of October. I don't think I remember the last time we saw 27 hours of geomagnetic storms and I can't imagine that that coronal hole is going to push enough solar wind this way to cause that and we don't see that on these predictions but we do see plasma coming out of nowhere what do I mean coming out of nowhere well really plasma usually takes between 18 and 70 hours depending on the speed of the plasma to reach the planet and that would mean that the incident must have happened today yesterday the day before let's take a look at what might cause this plasma that looks like it lasts close to 15 to 20 hours so we're looking for something that might impact us tomorrow or the 30th late into the 1st. This would have to be something that occurred maybe on the 27th or 28th. Well, let's look at a 7-day. Well, we have no major flares. We've already been hit by this situation long ago. We'd be looking in here some, somewhere. Uh... And I do notice that this was pinned in here, so this might have been a much larger flare than indicated. There's been some more pinned in areas here uh, that may or may not be true data. We're maintaining a very strong sea flare and sea baseline today, but today's the 29th. It wouldn't be here until, well, at least 48 hours, which puts it way beyond the predicted KP index forecast. So I see nothing that has hit our GOES satellite that would indicate any type of coronal mass ejection caused by a solar flare is inbound. Although the prediction center says it is, and I would see no way that that coronal hole 
could actually create a solar storm for over 27 plus hours. It makes little to zero sense. Heading over to SDO at 193 angstroms and 171 angstroms. I wanted to see over the last three days if there's any incidents that would cause something. And there was a large explosion here. Uh, and then the IE satellite was rocked by it. That is the only thing I can see besides the CME that just shut off the side of our sun, which would never be here that quickly and would not be something that affected Earth like that. I'm guessing that they did not report this solar flare here, or these several solar flares, and that it's a much larger flare than we can imagine. Let's watch this area here. This would have been Earth-facing. You can see it act activating now and continuing to flare. And then there is the satellite maybe being hit by the electrons inbound. Why didn't it show up on GOES? That would mean they were actually hiding it from us and the only reason a cme or solar flare and associated coronal mass ejection would be hidden from us if it was number one earth facing and number two extremely powerful we saw nothing on goes and we do see some action here that was long term you can see it on 171 angstroms as well and it does happen before the impact of the satellite, probably the electron impact. This is a low Earth orbit satellite, SDO. I also want to point out the large sunspot coming around the limb. We have several of them coming around the limb. I showed them to you a few days ago. And NASA reported that they were so large, these sunspots on the backside, they were making the sun wobble like they've never seen it wobble before. Now, I don't quite understand what they meant by that. That was not a wobble. That was an impact, well, on the camera in the studio or on the satellite, whichever camp you're in. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are we looking at here? An extremely long 27-hour plus geomagnetic storm inbound starting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Time here in the U.S. That's completely unexplained. This is not going to be solar winds. We already saw that. I will wait for any and all updates. And we will eventually see what it is on Discover when it does occur. But this has left me just about speechless, i.e. we know that something was hidden from us. God bless you and yours, folks. Please share and subscribe. Always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World.